All right, at this time, we're going to hear from a few of our candidates, and I'm going to start with Steve Oppenheimer. He's running for Public Service Commission. If you want to come up and say a few words. Well, it's good, good to be here in Lowndes uh, County. I want to thank uh, Gretchen for putting this together and inviting me down. Um, it's good to see the young Democrats over there in the corner, isn't it? So I'm Steve Oppenheimer, and I'm running for the Georgia Public Service Commission, and I want to put the public back in the Public Service Commission. This is a very... It's a very powerful office. It makes decisions that Im impact our budget now and inf impact our future tomorrow. But first, a little perspective on our future. Last month, we watched uh, the broadcast of uh, A Tale of Two Cities, at uh, Tampa and Charlotte. And we saw two very different images of America and two very different visions for America. And... Um, in Tampa, we saw the diversity we saw was all up on the stage, and the audience looked like an exclusive country club. And in Charlotte, the diver there was diversity on the stage, and when they pan panned the audience on TV, it looked like you could have been in Kmart or Kroger. It looked like America. And the two different visions, one is we everybody do their own thing, and the other one is... What we know works is we get more done when we work together. And that's what we got to do between now and November 6th. That um, I ask you, are we ready to do the work that we need to do to get President Obama reelected? Yes. Okay, are so? Are we fired up? Yes. Okay. So we have a great opportunity here in the state of Georgia, too, with, with this Office of the Public Service Commission, that Georgians need a common-sense, independent voice on the commission, someone who will fight to protect homeowners' rights, help Georgia families reduce their power bills, and create good energy jobs here in Georgia. We have some, we've gone downhill the last five years, last six years, as far as energy policy in Georgia. You have to think about setting our rates, our electric rates, as setting policy, because that's what the Public Service Commission does, as well as talking and deciding how energy will be made and managed in Georgia. And in these last five years of where people have struggled during the Great Recession to make ends meet, the Republican incumbent Chuck Eaton has voted to raise our rates 10 times, and we're now paying residential rates have increased 31% in the last five years. Is everybody feeling that? And um, while Georgians are struggling to find work, we have a commissioner that's supposed to be working full time, but he's missed 226 days of work. I don't think that's right when there's so much, so much work to be done to figure out the solutions to, to. For real. For real. That is for real. That's from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, and our follow-up research since that article shows that was the rate he'd set. He's missed more since then. And the story gets juicier also from the newspaper investigative report that Four of the five commissioners received 70 percent or more of their campaign contributions from the utilities with the incumbent I'm looking to unseat being in first place with 86 percent of his campaign contributions or nearly $200,000 coming from agents of the utility company. So I ask you, do we want a commissioner who thinks for, first of the utilities or a commissioner that thinks first of the people? Okay. So why me? Well, I ran a small business. I practiced family dentistry. I know hard work. I know the responsibilities and the challenges of running a small business. I've got three terrific adult sons, Matthew, Brad, Eli. They're young adults. I want to see them have a great future here in Georgia, the way it was when I moved here more than 30 years ago. And 
I have actually been involved in working on energy and energy security policy in Washington and Georgia for the last eight years, so I understand the issues. When I get in as our next commissioner, first thing we have to do is restore the professional advocate that was removed from the council four years ago by Governor Perdue's budget cuts. Since the Consumer Utility Council was removed, our rates have gone up over $4 billion in the last four and a half years. It's just too much. And when it comes to rate increases, I won't be a lapdog for the utilities. I'll be a watchdog for the people. And I know that we can be creating the good energy jobs in Georgia that our neighboring states are already doing. There's no reason we want to be sending those kind of businesses out of Georgia. We want to be attracting them to Georgia. So my victory in this P PSC race will be a win not just for the people of Georgia, but for the Democratic Party. This is our only statewide race, and the table is set for victory. Our polling shows that the race is actually neck and neck. But, and that's the good news. But we know, turn on the TV, all you hear are people talking now. Polls and pundits don't elect people. What elects, what elects candidates to be representatives are people like you coming together, working toward setting your eyes, your focus on a goal, and working until that goal is accomplished. We've only got like 36 days. Can we do that? Okay. So the issues that I want to get in there and um, work on um, are worthy on their own. But we have an opportunity here that, to show the media, Republicans, independents, and yes, even Democrats, that democratic values still resonate and will win in Georgia. In a little bit of history, it was actually the Public Service Commission race in 1992, where you're looking at consumer issues and, and issues of ethics and transparency, just like I discussed already, that it turned on. So um, it would be my honor to represent Georgia families. I am a hard worker, and I want to be working there for your future and my future and my kids' future. Um, many of you know the absentee ballots went out last week. About 75,000 of them have gone out so far. The voting is happening now. We're, we're in real time. This is, this is live, live theater now. And um, in 2008, about 2 million people voted uh, either absentee or early voting. So it's not a matter of waiting till November 5th or 4th or 3rd to get to work. Now's the time that we have to get to work on your, on your local issues, the statewide issue, and, and the presidential election. Now is the time. And um, I ask you to let us work with you, um, that we have a, a pretty user-friendly website at steveforgeorgia.com. It would we, my team. Uh, Ted Terry, my campaign manager that many of you know, and then there, there's more people that have chimed in and more volunteers are all eager, eager to work with you. It's a statewide race. Yeah, it takes a lot of time and money to run a statewide race. Contributions are appreciated, but, but your time is invaluable too, whether it's making calls or coordinating on canvassing. We would like that. Please do visit the website. Uh, like us on Facebook, then share it with, with your friends so the word gets out. It's real time. I, I, I want to earn your support, your prayers, and your vote um, between now and November 6th. So we're here to talk about energy. Are we ready to use our energy working together to make th great things happen in the state of Georgia and for this country? Yes. All right. Thank you, and thank you for welcoming me here. It's great to be here. A question?
Um, the question is on our utility bills, there's a uh, line separate from your charges on kilowatt hours used called uh, nuclear costs, nuclear construction cost recovery. Is that an issue in this election? Well, that's the legacy of legislation and the Public Service Commission and what they've done to date. What isn't legacy and what hasn't been resolved? The answer is yes. That was already approved by the legislature that we would prepay the interest on the nuclear plants. The problem with that is, as we're seeing, we don't know how, how much they're going to end up costing or how long it's going to take to cost to, to construct them. When the last plants were built in the 70s, they took 13 years and the final cost overrun was 12 times the original budget. Now, I contend that it is an issue in this election, despite the PSC's rule, uh, ruling a couple weeks ago when they looked at the progress of the construction project six months in arrears and said that it's only $28 million over budget, yet the independent consultant who's an expert on these matters said, no, that's not right. The project is actually $900 million over budget already and seven and a half months behind. So I, as a commissioner, when those costs come to the commission, there's a, partic there's a set price of $14 billion that's the certified price without cost sharing, without risk sharing. I would say that this new commission that begins in 2013 ought to not accept all of those cost overruns, as a matter of fact, because we don't know where we're going to end up. Is it constitutional? Well, it's, it is unusual. It's like prepaying all the interest on your house before you move in or all the interest on your car before you move in. And here you don't know when, you know, you don't know when it's going to be done. Um, but, yes, and it, it is uh, – it's actually used in, in some uh, parts of the country that they've used it for fossil fuel plants, be it natural gas or coal, which have predicted – pretty predictable construction costs and schedules. It's unprecedented that it's been put on the back of ratepayers to do it for a nuclear plant. I don't want to hold up the program. I'll be around, and I'm glad to take questions afterwards. And if you want to take them as a group afterwards, I'm happy. But thank you for, for letting me be here with you.